Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and we're going to do a quick video on rounding. So what we're trying to do today is we're going to firstly just make sure we can round to the nearest one, ten, hundred thousand, that type of thing. And then secondly move on to just rounding to a given decimal place. Now I hear you ask why do we even bother rounding numbers? For example, why might we round that number 16,364,802.13? Well, um, if you think about it, if we round that number, it would be easier to write down and say, for example. And if we do estimate, we can then make approximations and do calculations quicker with estimates rather than numbers um, fully uh, written out as follows. And just by way of an example, I just want to show you a quick link here. Uh, this was a news article with the BBC a few days ago. It was about Lego. And here's what it said about Lego. It said Lego is the world's second biggest toy, toy maker with 13% increase in sales. And it said its sales were 1.8 billion and its first half year profits were 550 million. Obviously, those numbers aren't the actual numbers, but for the purposes of writing it in the BBC article, they rounded it to make it more uh, easier to make sense of and less uh, digits. Okay, so going back to um, our lesson here, that's why we do it. And uh, a quick tip before we start rounding. If you're given a number to round, think about its place value um, while you're rounding. And a nice thing to help you with this as well is to put in the commas for thousands. I would always put in the comma uh, after every three digits after the decimal point just to make sure that you're following the thousands properly. And if we were to just think about the place value of this number, here it would be, the three is in the ones column, the sevens in the tens, etc, etc. So thinking of the place value of the number will help us when we're doing our rounding. Okay, let's do an example. Example one, we're asked to round 7,462.5996 to the nearest following things. I'm going to show you two ways to do these questions. You decide which one you prefer. Okay, so we're rounding to the nearest thousand. Write down uh, the number you're asked to round, 7462.5996. Then we're going to round to the nearest thousand, so we're going to identify the thousandth column, which is the seven, the digit sevens in the thousandth column, and we're going to draw a line after it. And then we're going to um, work with the following rule. So here's our rule that we use when rounding, that if the digit after the column we're interested in is uh, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, we round up, we round up the, the column we're interested in. And if the digit after the column we're interested in is one, two, three, or four, we what's called round off. And I'll show you exactly what these mean in this example. So let's go back to our example. We look at the digit after the column we're interested in. It's a four, so we round off. Okay, what that means is you keep the seven as it is, okay, and then everything else would be zeros. You round off that number. You keep the digit as it is and you all zeros after. Another way of thinking about it is you know you're rounding to the nearest thousand. Imagine you were, this was money and you were, give, you were giving it to someone and you only had thousand pound notes. Would you give them seven thousand or eight thousand? Well you'd give them seven thousand because seven thousand four hundred sixty two is closer to seven thousand than it is to eight thousand. Okay let's round to the nearest hundred. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, write the number down again. This time we're interested in the hundreds column and the digit that represents that is four. So we've got four hundreds. Draw a line after it and we look at the six. Now the six is uh, five or more, so we round up. So what we do is this four now becomes a five. We keep the seven as it is and then we have zeros afterwards, so 7,500. The other way of thinking about it, if we're rounding to the nearest 100, we were giving this money to someone, we only had 100 pound notes, what would we give them, 7,400 or 7,500? Well, we'd give them 7,500 because 7,462 is closer to 7,500. Okay, let's do it with the nearest 10 as well. Let's write our number down, here's our number again. 
we highlight the tens column which the digit six is in, draw a line after it. We've got a two here so we're going to round off. That means we keep our seven, four and six and then we write a zero after. Alternatively, if I was giving this to someone and I had ten pound notes, would I give them seven four sixty or seven four seventy? I'd give them seven four sixty because it's closer. And similarly with a whole number, do the same thing here. Whole number, we're going to highlight the whole number column. I'm going to put a line after the two. This is five or more, so we're going to round up. So this digit here is going to change to a three. These stay exactly as they are, and that is it rounded to the nearest whole number. If you had pound coins, what would you give them? 7462 or 7463? Well, you'd give them 7463 because it's closer. Okay, now we're going to do to one decimal place. So I'm going to just go up here. I'm going to bring this down. Okay, so if we're doing to one decimal place, exactly the same principle applies. That's the one decimal place column. Draw a line after it. And uh, because that's a nine, we're going to round this up. So we're going to round that to a 6, and everything else is going to say is, is 7462.6. Okay? Um, it's probably easiest to think of it just in this way. There isn't really another way to think of it unless you thought of having 10 Ps. Okay? So it's one decimal place. There we go. So let's keep going with this to two decimal places. So we'll highlight the second decimal place, line after it. Now this is a 9, so we're going to round this up. Hence, this would be a 10, but 10 can't fit in the column. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to write that as a 0. I'm going to carry a 1 over here to represent 10, and that would therefore be 6. And the rest would stay as it is, 7462.60. It has two decimal places. And lastly, three decimal places. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the third decimal place. Um, because the digit after is a 6, we're going to round this up. So that's going to be a 10. We're going to write down the 0 and carry the 1. That makes a 10, so we're going to write down the 0 and carry the 1. And 1 and 5 is 6. Okay, And everything else stays as is, 7462.600. Um, and it has the three decimal places, and we're done. So that's it for this particular video. I'm going to show you uh, a few questions for you to try, and the answers will be in the comments section on the website. Here you go. Thank you very much for watching and try these questions. I almost forgot, just a little shout out to my brilliant uh, New Year 10s. Hope you found this video useful to solidify what we talked about last week. Uh, make sure you do the questions for homework. Thanks guys.